Hello everyone, this is Bryant with Amusement Source Media and it is the final stop of Roller Coaster Road Trip 2024. We are here in Kansas City, Missouri at Worlds of Fun, which is one of the Cedar Fair Legacy Parks. I'm actually using the, uh, the hot air balloon to uh, block some of the, uh, the sun rays. It's definitely hotter here than it has been at the other parks, but Worlds of Fun opened in the 1970s and it has a really unique theme that I'm excited about, taking you kind of through the world. You're kind of supposed to explore different areas of the world. It's not like a very super localized type of theme, if that makes sense. They have a lot of roller coasters. They have a water park, which we won't go into today, but they have all kinds of rides. I can see a bunch of huge trees, so I'm expecting some really great landscaping and such. So. We're gonna give you a full tour of Worlds of Fun, ride some rides, give you a review. Let's head into the park. and it looks like this front area is called Gateway Gardens. They've got a big stage here where they probably do various shows throughout the year. Oh, I forgot to point out, there's like a spinning old school flat ride over there. But as we swing across this way, you run into the Grand Carousel, which right on the sign there says it is a 1918 classic. So let's go see where this thing's from. So the Grand Carousel, of course, constructed in 1918 by former cabinet maker Marcus E. Lyons. 64 jumping horses, two chariots. Okay, so it started out in Philadelphia, 1927, and moved to Birmingham, 1930s, Coney Island. And then it moved to Geauga Lake, which unfortunately is gone. And then after Geauga Lake closed, it moved here to Worlds of Fun. Also in this front area, it looks like you've got a main gift shop over there, the Norma's Funnel Cakes and Gateway Pizza. But we're actually going to head this way, which looks like it is probably an Asian themed area. So the area we just stepped into, according to the uh, map here is East Asia. And it's very pretty out here. Lots of foliage architecture that kind of matches that setup. And then we uh, run into our first roller coaster, which is Spinning Dragons. It's a Gershlauer spinning coaster. And uh, you may recognize it because it is uh, just like the pandemonium installations at the Legacy Six Flags parks, but with a much different theme and a lot of uh, really nice foliage around it. There's definitely a vibe going on here that I really like. So a bit down the pathway from Spinning Dragons, you run into a ride called Bamboozler, which looks like it is a old school super roundup. But perhaps the best part of this is this awesome panda guy hanging out, greeting everyone at the front. Looks like we're quickly changing areas here and they have their own sky coaster called the ripcord pulls you up there in a harness you uh, pull your own strap and fly down and then in the background over there which we're going to go check out here in a minute is patriot so i'm going to say we're going into the americana section all right i think our next stop as far as rides is concerned is patriot which is a b&m inverted coaster you can see the track all around us up here Nice red, white, and blue paint scheme. All right. 
right, y'all, just finished up my very first ride on Patriot. It's actually a lot of fun, very smooth. You don't get a lot of the head banging side to side. Has its own kind of unique layout. It's uh, definitely not the most intense B&M inverted coaster, but it is a pretty fun one. And just to the left of Patriot, they have a wind seeker ride called Steel Hawk. So you can take this up like a swing ride. Get a nice view of the uh, park and the surrounding Kansas City area. Get a great view of Patriot from up there too. This little plaza that's right outside of Steel Hawk is really, really nice with the trees and the, the plants and everything. They've got a Cinnabon over there so that you can remember that you're in the Americana section. And here's that little center plaza area. There's places to sit, there's shade, just lots of landscaping to look at. As we continue past the Wind Seeker Tower, we run into Timberwolf, which is one of their wooden roller coasters. You can hear it coming in right now. Doesn't look like you can really see it from this area though. We just rode Timberwolf. Kind of, you can kind of see it in the background. It's kind of hard to see from over here where it's at, but it's kind of like your classic wooden roller coaster built in the late 1980s. Uh, it's got some weird quirks to it. Like at the end, you kind of slam back and forth. Uh, there's a couple other weird things on it. It's not not the most terrible ride ever, but it's also not really the most fulfilling roller coaster ever either. Uh, but the employees in the station were awesome. And as we go to the left of Timberwolf, you run into maybe the best named ride ever, Cyclone Sam's Cloud Poofer 2000. It's an indoor wipeout attraction. So it's probably pretty interesting actually. As you come down, you've got this little Wild West offshoot here. And you've got the Kansas City Westbound Express Behind that, you've got the detonator, which is their SNS tower. You got two towers on that instead of the typical three that you some that you usually see. Well, all, all down this way, it's just like a big old Western fun time. But lots of foliage too, of course. Oh, we've got a Troika. Old school classic Troika ride over here. Let's get closer. The Troika ride is the Mustang Runner. And over here, right across from the Mustang Runner, you can see where you actually board the detonator towers. And down here in the Wild West, it looks like across the way you can get some burritos if you want. And then right here, you've got a boarding station for their train. The World's a Fun Railroad. Looks like across from the Troika over here, they had some kind of summer show going on earlier this summer. Let me know in the comments below, what are the shows usually like here at Worlds of Fun? So before we head into the Europa area of the park, we're actually, it's like a little side pathway that comes out of Wild West. And I think this is where you go to get to the Mamba roller coaster, which is the huge roller coaster back there. So let's see. We've wrapped all the way around this pathway. 
you run into the Sand Dune Diner right here, which is kind of like your, you know, Cedar Fair has, the legacy Cedar Fair parks have a lot of these diners. I think it's that same kind of setup. And you can see the first drop of Mamba and the main entrance to Mamba is right up this way. And uh, one thing I want to say is that this, this little corner back here where Mamba is, this is considered like the Egypt part of the African theming that they do here. So they also have a rapids ride over here, which I believe the entrance is way up that way. But if you're ready to get wet, it looks like they got you covered without even going into the water park. We, uh, we will not be riding the rapids right today. So if you kind of backtrack out of the Wild West Town, you run into Planet Snoopy, which is of course their kitty area. A lot of these kitty areas are very similar. So we'll just give you a really quick look. They've got the Snoopy versus Red Baron plane ride over on this side, your classic Red Baron ride. On the right of that, you've got the Cosmic Coaster, which is like a little wacky worm children's coaster they've got the snoopy boutique over here we've got like a big center point over here that's like a photo op and they've got a character out meeting and greeting always fun to see the characters out A lot of the same kind of design features that Valley Fair's Planet Snoopy has with the banners. Got a few different rides up here though. We've continued up. It looks like they've got some flyers up here. Looks like we're at the exit, the Woodstock Gliders. And we keep going up this way. And you've got some Woodstock Whirlybirds mini teacups here. Across from that is Charlie Brown's windup, like a little children's swing ride. Oh, there's something. Oh, they've got one of the little, uh, it's like a whip ride, but it's inverted. It's called the Beagle Brigade Airfield. Yeah, so there are the uh, Brigade Airfield planes that you can get into. And uh, we'll head up this way, show you a couple more rides. Coming up next, you have Sally's Swing Set, which is like a little miniature swing ride. Of course, Planet Snoopy has to have the Kite Eating Tree Kitty Drop Tower. We've got the uh, camp bus back here. Classic children's ride. Swinging back and forth up and down on that bus. And it just, my goodness, it just keeps going. Let's see what's over on this side. Okay, Lucy's tugboat. A little boat that's, that uh, spins around as it goes back and forth on the ramp. Looks like we've got a whole play area over here in this little pavilion type of building and come over here you've got some big trucks it's called the peanuts road rally those big old trucks right there the 
across from that way, you've got the Flying Ace Balloon Race, which is like your Samba Tower ride. You get in your balloon and go up and down. As we move on from the balloon race, you run into the Peanuts 500, which is like a little kids ride. Let's get through here a little bit. Oh, so they basically have like two kitty whip rides. You've got your more classic version in these cars. And then you have the uh, Beagle Brigade across the way. And then I'm sure you've seen some of the red track up here. They do have their own monorail type ride, which is Snoopy's Rocket Express. Get in a, get in a little vehicle and take a spin all around and you can see the track comes back through over here connects back with the station and you've got a little center point where you can take a picture with a statue of Snoopy. Backtracked just a little bit over back to the Cosmic Coaster and we come down these stairs here. There's even more Planet Snoopy. This is crazy. So right in front of us we've got Snoopy's Space Buggies. Little spinning bounce ride. You've got a little miniature train over here called uh, Snoopy's Junction. You get on the train and it takes you around a little track there. And last but certainly not least, you've got the Lioness Launcher. It looks like you lay down and spin. Man, so many uh, kids rides at this park. As we uh, come under the railroad tracks, you run into Europa. And the first ride that you run into is the Autobahn, which is a bumper cars ride see them in there they're not quite running right now but lots of shade in this little general area you've got like a little beer garden over here you can enjoy some beer get the beer at this stand over here it looks like very good and then you run into the flying dutchman which is like a Little spinning flat ride with little swings on it, little boat themed swings. Definitely older school looking for sure. Got another nice little fountain. Looks like we're going into like a French section. They have Le Taxi Tour up there, which is a antique car ride. Looks like at uh, some point this year they had a Moulin Rouge theme show maybe we're at the very end of summer so I'm not really I don't really think that shows are still going but looks like we're gonna have the Cleaver Beavers uh, coming to that theater here uh, pretty soon for Halloween And just like that, you uh, turn the corner and you're in Africa, Morocco more specifically. We have a really cool, like, topiary clock going on up here. And nothing says welcome to Africa like an Auntie Anne's booth. But so far, each area of this park has like such a cool vibe. You can see the Zambezi Zinger entrance right there, unfortunately, Today, during our visit, the ride is broken. We've already been told that. So, it's their newest roller coaster. Huge bummer, but it happens. Now I understand you saw the Here is a look at the Zambezi Zinger. They, it's got a cool little spiral lift hill on a wooden coaster, and followed by the first drop. Lots of little <laughs> twists and turns and tight angles. A little bit of a better look at that spiral lift hill. You have a fun little segment of track that swings right around it too. It shoots up over this way. See on the back side the, the track does use a lot of the uh, terrain to create the excitement. It's a very cool layout. And kind of front and center in this Africa area is Boomerang which is your standard Vacoma Boomerang classic roller coaster here. Two lift hills are behind the uh, trees there, but you get pulled back, you go through all of these inversions forwards, and then you come back and do it backwards.
I think we've ended up on the other side of this Africa theme section. You've got Zulu, which is like a really cool old school enterprise flat ride. There it goes. And then as we continue down this pathway, you run into the park's third wooden roller coaster, which is Prowler. This was opened in the late 2000s. It's a GCI coaster. You can see the lift hill right behind there. Let's see if we can get a better look at this ride. Yeah, this is another one of those rides that's like uh, super buried in the back, but you can see the entrance over here. As we head under the railroad tracks, we run into Scandinavia. Oh, I see a ride over here to the left. Looks like we got a classic sea dragon. Swings you over the water over here, a little water feature. See a log ride back there too. All right, little sitting area by this water feature. And as we uh, continue on, we've got a few flat rides up here. Vikings Wharf, like a little bar set up up there. You've got the Scandi Scrambler. And the Scandi Scrambler is exactly what you think it is. Classic Scrambler ride. Down on that lower level, you've got the Scrambler. And then up here on this upper level, you've got the Nordic Chaser flat ride. Smokes. That thing goes fast. And our final ride as we do the full loop around the park is the Viking Voyager, which is a log ride. folks we just rode the log ride that's a really interesting log ride <laughs> you can tell it's definitely one of the uh, older ones drags the uh, bottom of the trough a lot but you don't get very wet so if you only want a little bit of a spritz it's a uh, it's a great ride for that back up here towards the entrance of the park they have a exhibition worlds of fun history exhibit unfortunately i think by the time this video comes out this probably will no longer be here Some like classic name tags up there. Old mascots of the park. They have an area with guest moments that's a lot of fun. All kinds of classic pictures. Some old uniforms over here. Some information about this theater that we're actually in right now, the shows. Moulin Rouge theater that we walked by earlier. Wow. If you grew up going to this park, I'm sure that this is a really a big blast from the past. All kinds of little memorabilia pieces in here looks like they used to have a boat called the uh, cotton blossom was here part of the grand opening 
at the park. May 26, 1973. And they have a section here that shows off some of the drafts and design concepts for the different themed areas. We were just in Europa, or excuse me, Scandinavia. We were in Europa earlier than that. You can have a segment that kind of pays homage to some of the more popular pass rides here. Like the Scream Roller, ex <laughs> Extreme Roller, the Omega Tron. The Shoes Boomer. Got some wild names. Some really cool classic maps over here. They also have a part of the train from a former roller coaster here. It was taken out in 2003, the Orient Express, an old Aero train. Old Arrow roller coaster. I also have a POV running. If you never got to ride it, you could see what the ride actually did. All right, everyone, that does it for this visit, our first ever visit to Worlds of Fun here in Kansas City, Missouri, one of the Cedar Fair Legacy <laughs> Parks that is now part of the brand new Six Flags Entertainment Corporation. This is a really fun park. Uh, the theme is pretty unique as you go through Africa and Europe and all of that, little hints of those areas with the architecture, the ride themings, all of that. It's a lot of fun and it's different. Kind of reminds me of like the Bush Gardens parks a little bit, if that makes sense, but definitely with its own flair and style. Unfortunately, like we said, Zambezi Zinger was not running, so I can't tell you about it. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we can come back out to the park and ride it at some point, but I would say probably my favorite roller coaster here is Mamba, which is the big Morgan hyper coaster. Lots of fun, lots of airtime. And Prowler, their wooden roller coaster, we couldn't really show you a lot of because it's kind of off in the woods by itself. That thing has a lot of punch to it too. It is flying and zigzagging all the way through. So I think those two rides were a lot of fun. I didn't really ride anything here that was you know over overly terrible i'm not a big fan of timberwolf but as i get older some of those wooden coasters like that uh they don't do as much for me i'm much more into the kind of the newer smaller coasters with all the unique elements and the uh the newer trains and stuff but this concludes our roller coaster road trip 2024 we made it it was a pretty crazy trip with a lot of kind of driving back and forth so if y'all have any questions about how we planned this trip out, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions about Worlds of Fun, I'd be happy to answer those. We thank y'all for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon at a theme park.